Uh, quite frankly, I was a little intimidated to even debate Jesse Jackson at all because I had seen the man perform. Um, and, uh, you know, he's a terrific speaker. He's a, he uh, has unbelievable facility in the use of iambic pentameter. He speaks in rhymes. I may be well-dressed, but I'm still oppressed. I, w I felt kind of intimidated. But nevertheless, we got up there, and we got into this debate about America, and I realized that this was a debate about our own experience. We were both talking about the way America looked to us. Now, the weird thing about it is that if I were to hold my hand up alongside his, um, our skin color is almost exactly the same. And yet, as we were speaking, as we were debating, uh, I realized that we have two totally different perspectives on America. Uh, I began by saying to him, I said, Reverend Jackson, look, I don't deny that racism is real. And in a big country like America, if you look hard enough, you're going to find examples of it. I said, but show me a racism today that is strong enough to keep you or me or your kids or my daughter from achieving the American dream. Where is that kind of racism? Show it to me. Uh, very interestingly, he replied by saying, Dinesh, I, I can't show it to you, but that doesn't mean anything because the racism that I'm talking about is no longer overt. It is, in fact, now covert. It's hidden racism. And, in fact, the racism has kind of gone underground. And yet, it operates no less powerfully to keep those of us who are persons of color from achieving our American dream. Invisible racism. And as I listened to this, and I'm sitting down, and initially I thought that this was a little bit deranged. Um, but I, I, I then began to ask myself, I think, a more interesting question. Why is it that the two of us who look, you might say, the same, why do we see America so differently? Why is it the case, it's like two of us are sitting at a restaurant and we see an accident, it's the same fact on the ground, and yet we, see two dof we give two completely different and in fact contradictory accounts of it. How is that actually possible? And then I realized as I thought about that, that what actually seemed to be going on is something a little deeper. That in fact what was really happening is that Jesse Jackson and I were reflecting two completely different perspectives. I'm going to call it on the one hand the immigrant perspective and on the other hand the perspective of an indigenous minority who has been in this country for a long time. Now what is the immigrant perspective? Well the immigrant perspective is the immigrant is a guy who has actually lived in another country. He's actually a product of another world. And so the immigrant is in a position to compare America to some other existing society. The immigrant is naturally, you might say, someone who is going to engage in this kind of actual comparison. I realized in debating Jesse Jackson that he was not actually comparing America to anything. He wasn't saying that things are really bad in America, but they're much better someplace else. In fact, if there was a standard of comparison that he was using, you'd have to call it utopia or the Garden of Eden. And basically his point was that comparing America to the Garden of Eden, perfection, America falls short. The immigrant, on the other hand, using a comparative or historical standard was actually talking about other existing societies, other real countries and real ways of life. And so this appeared to be part of the reason why the two of us were seeing America so differently. It's very easy when you're uh, born in America to say things like, all cultures are equal. This is called cultural relativism. No culture is better or worse, superior or inferior to any other. I've read this in innumerable sociology textbooks. And I would like to believe it. But I actually know that my own life is a decisive refutation of it, as is the life of every immigrant who has come voluntarily to the United States. I'm not talking about refugees who come because they have to. But any immigrant who's coming voluntarily is voting with his feet. 
in the most decisive way possible against his own existing culture and in favor of another culture. Now remember that there is an incredible strong natural bias against doing this. I mean, we're born into a world. It's the only world we know. It's the world of my family, my friends, my school. Everything that matters to me is in that world. What would it take for a guy like me to have to leave it and go someplace else? Why the heck would I even think of doing that if I thought that the other culture was just the same as the place I started? It's not better. It's not worse. It's only different. The very fact that I do it means I'm looking for something better. I'm voting, as I say, in the most decisive way I know how, in favor of this new culture. For me, it's better. It's a better life. And, and America is that kind of a magnet. The reason we're having an immigration debate is that everybody knows that if we basically take down the invisible wall, we don't really have a wall, but if we had a wall, if we took the wall down, Half the world would come here. America remains the greatest of all magnets. And that means it actually has a legitimate claim, not based on some chauvinistic proclamation, but based on the actual experience of human beings on planet Earth. It has a claim to being some kind of an exceptional society. American exceptionalism.